So now the dust has settled after my Brighton Park track day, I've written myself a little bit of a list of things I need to do to get it ready for the next outing. Fortunately, it is pretty short, which despite the negativity in the last vlog, actually a bit of a success considering how much is new on this build. Most of it obviously revolves around the cooling system. Everybody be cool, you be cool. Got a bit of a weep from the drain plug on the front of the block. So I've got a new crush washer from Honda. So I'm gonna chuck that on along with some sealant on the thread. So that should hopefully resolve that one. I've already replaced a few of the Mikkel or clamps which are on there. I just cannot get them to seal very nicely at all. Uh, so I've got some more Jubilees. So we'll go through and replace all of those. Uh, whilst the cooling system is drained, I do have plans to put a stack cooling temperature in. So I'm gonna stick this Mishimoto sensor, adapter, doobly what's it in the top hose. Also need to take the hose barb off the inlet manifold, which I put on before. Uh, I didn't clearance the inlet quite enough and it's a pain in the ass to get the Jubilee clip in a nice position and get it tightened down. So I'm gonna whip that off, just clearance that a little bit more. And I think that should be more or less it for the cooling system to be fair. Uh, also notice there's a bit of a weep from the rocker cover gasket in a couple of places. I think it's the same issue that I had with the sump gasket actually. There's no RTV on there at all and looking through the guides, you are supposed to put a little bit of RTV in a couple of little places. Got a new gasket set here from Honda. So we'll chuck that on with some RTV by the book and hopefully again, that will resolve that. Whilst the rocker cover is off, the breather port that I fitted before, it was a terrible idea anyway, to be fair. It's not worked, it's not sealed properly. It's weeping everywhere. So that is going to get welded on. And as I've discussed and moaned about before, the paint has gone a really nasty kind of eggshell yellow colour with the heat. It's not stood up very well at all. So I'm going to prep that right back and repaint it red this time, which will hopefully stand the test of time a little bit better. But first and foremost, we need to get it up in the air. So I've got the car in the air. And despite my best efforts with a bit of cardboard daily design, I still made a hell of a mess draining the coolant out of the block, hence the towels underneath. Regardless, if we look at the old crush washer for the drain plug, it's in a bit of a mess. So the new one combined with the Loctite 542 should sort that reet out. Also got the Mishimoto sensor adapter thing fitted, which was easy enough. So I can pop those back on and carry on. And the top hose has been refitted with the gauge adapter, swapped over all the Mikalors to the Jubilee clips, got the bung fitted down there with the new washer, and I've taken off the hose barb from the back, and I just need to get a new Doughty washer for it, and I can go back on because I've done the clearancing now. The cam cover is off. There it is. And I've prepped up the area around the bung bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, ding, 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 ding. and the bung itself. So with any luck, that should weld up nicely. I managed to get my hands on another Doughty washer. So I've stuck that hose bar back in. Um, with any luck, you can see there's just a bit more room now. I've clearance that in that manifold, so it's easier to get the Jubilee on and off and in a nicer position. So with any luck, that should seal that up nice and tight. Cam cover is off with the welder. And I've taken my gear linkage back out. The reason for this is I was a bit disappointed about the amount of play I was getting out of the hybrid racing shifter. And everything had been changed. So the bushes on this side have been changed. Bushes on this side have been changed. Obviously the shifter itself, which gets rid of the bushing in here. Uh, the only thing that was left was this swivel joint at the end. And you can see there's not loads of movement but there is a fair bit of movement in this joint here fortunately Hasport sell this gear linkage repair kit so that involves drilling out this massive rivet here taking obviously the bushes out of there and replacing them with those ones and a bolt sounds easy enough so that's all done was easy enough. Told you. Gave it a little bit of a squeeze with the G-clamp just to make sure everything was nice and tight. 
packed it full of grease. And all that seemed to do was magnify what little play there was in this bottom joint as well. And unfortunately, those ones do not come with the kit. So I gave them a bit of a squeeze as well and knocked in a bit of a uh, kind of spacer washer in there to take up the slack. And if anything, now I'm a little bit worried it might be too tight. With any luck, once it's all in the car and you've got the extra torque of the big long shifter, that should be fine. We'll wang it back in and see. Well, to be honest, it's not had a massive effect. There's still a fair bit of side to side play there. I'm sure it's a bit less than it was before, to be honest. Uh, but where exactly that play is coming from, I don't know now. All I can think is it's inside the gearbox itself. But all things considered, for a quarter of a century old car, the shift is pretty bob on. Yeah, to be fair, there's basically no movement at all in that universal joint. All of it seems to be inside the box itself. So I can't do any more than that. Super quick turnaround for my welder contact Kev. Great work. I'm pretty sure that is not going to leak anymore. And now just the joyful task of prepping it back for more paint. Ugh. Long. Batch primer is an absolute lung destroyer. But yeah, she's prepped and she's etch primed. There are a few areas that I just need to work on, but she's not far away. So I had another go at the PB bits, flatted back the etch primer and chucked a layer of white primer on top so hopefully make the red a little bit more vibrant and the red is the next step so I'm going to be using this VHT very high temperature Simonis stuff never used it before might come out crap but there's only one way to find out well that's not gone particularly well I'll be honest left it until I came back from work yesterday afternoon so almost a day of just air drying and the finish still looked really really good um, to fully cure it though, you've got to bang it in the oven. So I did that, which made the house smell absolutely lovely, by the way. And unfortunately, it all kind of went to shit. Well, obviously you can see I've started prepping it back already, but I've left this area here so you can see what I'm talking about. It's just started bubbling and lifting all over the place. And I've been going around just uh, scraping it off and it's just falling off in chunks, as you can see. It's just not adhered at all well. And I don't think it's an actual issue with the paint that I've used to be fair, and I'll tell you why. Because in this area around here, it's adhered absolutely fine. It's lovely and solid. And this area was predominantly bare metal because I had to sand it right back where the fitting was welded on. So I think what's actually happened is the lacquer underneath has been the issue. And it's quite difficult to see on camera probably, but this yellow stuff here, I believe, is the old lacquer, and it's just not stood up to the heat at all. Obviously, it was the issue before with it going yellow and starting lifting, and while I've put it in the oven, it's just gone even worse, and just pickled and bubbled and popped, and just caused this carnage. Hey ho, back to the grindstone. Well, I've done most of the sanding now, apart from the bit in the middle, which is going to be absolutely disgusting because it's wild fiddly. And you know what? I'm half tempted just to lacquer it like it is now. A, because at least that way I know we're going wrong again. And B, because I think it kind of looks a bit cool. Well, I did actually have another go at priming it. And sure enough, that went absolutely terribly again. So in the end, I did decide just to embrace defeat and just threw some lacquer over the mess that was left. 
And to be honest, I kind of like it still. A bit more white in it this time, which I think works pretty well. It may only be a temporary thing because I have actually lined somebody up to shop blast it and then I will probably get it powder coated. But then I might not. Depends uh, how much it grows on me. Anywho's, probably around about time we get this thing running again because I need to bleed through the coolant. So let's give that a go. Funnily enough, I'm getting pretty adept at doing that. But yep, let up fine, no obvious leaks, how temperature fine, all good. And whilst I was waiting, I even stuck a badge on the back. I think it's probably time I went for a test drive. or so and all that it's managed to drop is two tiny little spots of oil which compared to how it was a few weeks ago I can definitely take that uh, absolutely fine on the test drive as well fingers crossed that does mean unless something goes majorly wrong between then and now it is ready for a little sprint day at Kerber in just over a week's time so yeah failing any massive mishaps I will see you on that one